Well, hello everybody. It's the Centralized Dave uh, with yet another podcast, and I'm here with Curtis. Hello, Curtis. Hi, David. We haven't done a podcast uh, for a very long time. The primary reason is that my time schedule changed completely. Uh, my life, my personal life <laughs> changed for better, I must say. That's one reason. And the second reason is that I am back to the news television. The good side of it is that I am able to learn some stuff that I didn't see clearly, that clearly before, let's say, and it's geopolitical stuff. And uh, what I what I already know, I can give you a little hint that uh, there is going to be a roller coaster this year. However, uh, we are doing podcast today and we will start with the updates like we usually do. So, put, uh, Curtis, that's uh, that was our little tradition that you always started with Bitcoin. 17 months from the all-time high, is that right? November to November, and then for so 16 months from the all-time high, it looks like. 470 days. Yeah. Um, so it's been a, quite a long run now. Um, I think last time we talked, it was in December. Yes. Uh, so it's been a while. Yes. A lot has happened. <laughs> We've least recently had the pump up to about 24,000, um, yes. which is quite bullish. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, we. Uh, I did a video on my channel in January talking about things like the some of the classical Bitcoin um, indicators like the Puel multiple, um, Nupal, uh, realized profits, things like that. And they were all at a bottom low, a cycle low. So they were all hitting um levels that that indicated the bottom of the last three bear markets i think eight out of nine of them or almost every one of them did and i put out a video in january saying that it, it's indicating we're getting pretty close um all of those have now bounced off that and of course the price has as well um does that mean we can't retest back down no um so markets uh s p etc have bounced as well and that's part of why we've had strength um so yeah that's where we're at with bitcoin okay so maybe follow up with smp and then i will do both yeah um so yeah you can go there you so the chart. yeah mm -hmm. just basic chart so it shows the high uh at the 4800 we had a descending several uh lower highs you can see the blue line showing we had one two three lower highs uh we had the bottom at 3550 in october right mm -hmm. and then we've broken that downward channel this is the weekly and um we're sort of pulling back to test that a bit but we hit almost 4200 we're testing back down uh but uh, a fairly bullish chart here in the short term um we can talk a little bit more about whether we're going to go back to lower lows or if there's a greater crash coming um, but that's the latest update that we've, we broke that descending line and we're retesting it now. I should start with Bitcoin. Uh, the last time we had the podcast, uh, we had a podcast, we we're still like 17 K or something. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, you should tune in that podcast, uh, whoever you are and you're watching because uh, it was pretty interesting that uh, I even didn't want to believe myself what I was seeing because I was seeing very beautiful descending wedge and that descending wedge is breaking upwards but uh, it's not broken upwards yet completely it means that it's not confirmed the breaking down of the the breaking upwards of the descending wedge is not yet confirmed because we have still not broken broken up that and it's not it can be theoretically it can be just a week when we broke that broke that upwards it can be just a week by the way this is 200 uh, weekly average that's why it hasn't gotten broken we were testing the 200 weekly average quite uh, dramatically right but uh above the right the red line that i have just drawn uh it's we could we could just wick above it it's true but more often than not uh it's it's more uh, more stable so we also 
might make some close some weekly close above that line and then it actually should should go to at least 28000 and only then we can say that the descending wedge was really valid and that it got broken up like they always kind of do and on the contrary the descending wedges uh, the descending wedges get broken upwards and ascending wedges get broken downwards the bottom was 155 are you, are you comfortable to declare that that that's it for the bottom mm, that's too soon to tell too soon uh, to tell. i will refrain from making that statement this year is going to be a lower, lower roller coaster and that's what right. i can say uh, and geopolitically as well lots of stuff are going to change lots of uh, lots of shift as well in the right. geopolitical scene from yeah so <laughs> personally i'm about i'm i would give it about an 80 percent chance that that was the bottom at 15.5 i'm pretty comfortable with that number for however for reasons. but there's always the the outlier the war the war accelerates or something else there's always that and i would agree that that could crash stocks and and, and crypto as well but in January, there was $1.5 billion a day invested into stocks. So there was a massive cash um, investment and there's still a lot on the sidelines. Um, but, um, and I think the worst is, is over for stocks in the short term, but we can talk about that a bit later. Um, um, also what I always check and I know the audience loves it. It's my favorite leverage indicator over leveraging kind of yeah that's, that was also the reason why i was the only one here i think uh, we had a podcast uh with isabel and even even the viewers even the comments uh after the podcast everybody was like this has to go to my area of 12k kind of my area well i had it drawn right but because of the huge spike in the short in the short thing right. and the short leverage coming uh, in the mid November, I was saying actually, I think all the time that I was neglecting that, that no, this cannot go now down. I was opened in December. In December, I was myself as well, very much unsure and very much doubtful that we might actually go down in December, but November, I kind of knew. However, the present time, uh there was a short squeeze obviously yes it was a short squeeze uh the, the january was a short squeeze and people started opening a long leverage on 25th of january so 25th of january uh that's uh that's 23k 24k so this was the time when people started opening long leverage and month later we are still the same price so we haven't moved ever since right. people started opening low leverage we haven't right. moved right um and that's in, that's an uh, interesting thing to notice however the leveraging is not i would not say it's that critically dramatic we've seen worse we've seen way worse uh we had a similar the last year in august we also were at 23k 24k even 25 right and there was more right. leverage opened uh, i'm talking right. about this time last right. year's summer this was more leverage here okay over leveraging so this is not that critical but people are opening long leverage at, for a month now s p 500 right. yeah your line also when i put it on weekly i'm glad that you brought this line up 3900 it's kind of like a mid-level of the structure from from the last year kind of so one year of a structure 3900 yeah. is kind of a mid-level and as the mid level is always very important and it has reactions from both sides so when you're going down it tends to to make some kind of a that there is some kind of a bounce so right i'm not sure what i if i want to say anything else to the s p 500 as of yet to be honest um Okay, you can look at DXY gold if you want. Just exactly, gold. exactly. Uh, yeah, DXY, nice. you can see we're at one thirteen last year. It fell off massively, and, and we're. Yeah. Do you remember that I drew this line? <laughs> I drew this yeah. line like the beginning of the year when we yeah. didn't even think we were gonna go that much up, and the line still stayed there when we were yeah. retesting it this many times. Yeah. So um, U.S. dollar has 
consolidated at that lower 103, 104, which has been good for stocks, um, good for crypto, good for risk on. It's eased some of the pressure uh, for emerging markets and non-US dollar um, debt. Mm -hmm. Or so rather US dollar debt. The repayment has gotten a little bit cheaper, which takes some pressure. And then of course, corporate profits in the US now, because the, the, the dollar is a bit weaker, the, the repatriated money is more valuable, right? So if you're bringing dollars in non, non-US dollars back into US dollars, you're getting an extra bonus to your corporate earnings. So it, it's a support for uh, corporate earning um, uh, realized profits. So that's good. Um, on gold, um, it hasn't broken out yet. It's still teasing the bulls. Um, I think we hit 1925 on gold. If you want to jump to that chart, well, um, gold. Yes. Yeah, it keeps teasing them that we're going to have a breakout to new all time highs. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I would say that this is going to go actually, this is going to break downwards, but I'm surprised. I was thinking of shorting in this area, but I would have gotten stop lost with this anyway. So uh, if the thesis is that stocks will the will get a, a risk on bid uh inflation will, will continue to fall and the fed will stop raising rates if all of those are true i'm not saying they are but if they are all true gold should get into the 2000s in the short term just because you will have the us dollar weakness and uh you'll also have um uh if you look at well i think with isabel we were looking at gold will uh what was it Gold started to break out, I think it was 2011. Uh, I can't reference that, so we'll, we'll drop that. But basically, yeah, I, I think we, we will go uh, into the 2000s in gold if the stock market holds up. So just okay, to preface you. the next graphs, um, from mid-year last year, for the last six to nine months, about 70% of traders and investors and experts have said we're going to have a massive recession that you need to sell your stocks. Uh, s and is going to 3,000. Uh, the real estate's going to crash. Jobs are going to crash. And they've been wrong. They've all been wrong so far. That doesn't mean it can't happen tomorrow, but they've been wrong. Um, the None of those have happened. And I'll go through some charts. Again, that doesn't mean it's not going to happen, but let's look at corporate earnings. So this is um, includes January, uh, sorry, 2022, the full year, um, I see corporate profits rising here all the way through, including 2022. Um, Q4 of 2022 was beat expectations. We had about 80% of companies beat the estimates, although the estimates had come down. The analysts said we we're going lower. They still beat those. <laughs> um, corporate profits have been reasonable. They have not crashed. Um, if you look at jobs, the next slide. <clears throat> yep. Um, we had a surprise 517,000 new jobs in January in the US. So the prediction was for like 185,000. So the they missed, there was a standard deviation of eight, I think. In other words, the analysts missed off to several multiples in their predictions. A huge surprise. Um, uh, so it just, it just shows how, how wonky the analysts and the, the predictability of these things are. Um, unemployment rate went down again to 3.4%. So we're at like a 50 year low for the unemployment rate. Um, some people will say, well, they play with the statistics and that's because people are retiring and because of COVID. There's some tr truth there that some people are leaving, are permanently leaving the, the market, the job market, but we're still seeing historically low unemployment rate. We have not seen a spike in job losses. Um, there's been headlines like companies like Twitter and Facebook cutting, but those are not on net. Those are not large numbers. And a lot of those people are getting rehired, it seems. So once again, it, the narrative is not fitting the idea of this big recession coming. This is US house prices by month. Um, we've had volume of sales fall. 
So the number of houses selling has fallen drastically, about 40%, but prices have not fallen. So we have not had mortgage defaults or bankruptcies wiping out the consumer on that level like we had in 2008 or 2009. So now sales volume usually comes down before prices fall. So maybe that's going to happen. It just hasn't happened yet. And if we go to uh, inflate the big one, CPI, the inflation. Mm -hmm. So this is the latest. It includes January. So you can see 6. that. 6.4. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this, so in June of last year, we hit 9.1%. That was the peak. If you remember, we did a lot of videos on this, some, some podcasts and chats. Now we've had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven consecutive months where mm -hmm. headline CPI fell. Um, now we only went down 0.1% from December to January. And again, the bears are saying, oh, okay, so inflation has stopped falling and it's going to get sticky. And that means the fed's going to have to raise rates above 5%. That could be true. So the next February report, it's very important that we drop below 6%. I think if, if it's, if it stops around okay. six, I agree that's bearish because it does suggest that maybe Powell will have to start raising rates again. So, so watch for that February report. Um, I think we're going to drop below six. I think we're going to go to like 5.7, 5.8, and that's bullish. I would agree that the inflation peaked for the next two years. The inflation peaked. I would agree with that. We also had retail sales bounced in January. So very surprising. People are, the cons U.S. consumer is spending a lot. Um, so retail sales bounced up. Um, a lot. So again, none of the data is saying even recession, forget a deep recession. It's not even seeing recession at all. And all of the bear arguments are about what's going to happen, what's going to happen, what's going to happen. For sure, all of that could happen. It just is not yeah, happening. It's, <laughs> it reminds so, me, yeah, it reminds me, it reminds me Dr. Barry when he started shorting the, uh, the American housing market first in 2007, I think he almost went bankrupt at that point. He's among the best bears in the world as well, yeah. I think. And even he can't hit the timing, so nobody can. <laughs> and especially yeah. with bearishness. It's... Yeah, he's been wrong ever since that call. He's been wrong for the last 10 years on many things. But um, I'm not following guy. his... I'm not yeah. following his calls for the past 10 years, but I've been following his calls over the past two or three years. Yeah. And he's been uh, predicting even worse scenario than 2008. Yeah. Right. And he was predicting it uh, whole 2021 and then it didn't happen. And then in 2022, looks like it does. I think he's just a little bit off with his calls again. Right. Right. Timing wise. So yeah, the bears are saying basically we're going to have stagflation of some sort. In other words, interest rates will keep rising. The Fed will keep rising and corporate profits will, will start falling. And we're going to have like a stagflation scenario. Could happen. I don't think the Fed's raising much higher. And I don't think the economy's that bad. Um, what I would watch for is if housing prices stopped, started crashing, uh, that would be a trigger, but it's just not happening. Um, I think there's demand. I think there's supply shortages in housing. I think millennials are going to be buying. Um, so what what is going to crack it? I mean, what's going to crack the system? I mean, obviously, a worsening of the war in Europe, like a, a, the, the, the Black Swan mm -hmm. reference, right? That, But that can happen any time. So it's very hard to bet on that. People that have bet on that have almost always been wrong. Um, yeah, you can... You can follow the Ukrainian manpower because when that runs dry, that's when you should be looking at. And there is, uh, it's drained more than a half of it is now drained. So, right. The war has been uh, so. lasting for a year, but there, there, yeah, yeah. You you could you could be timing it from deriving from this from this fact. But if we're going to just look at markets, markets can be very bullish through things like Iraq war, Afghanistan war. There can be a lot of bad things happening in the world. 
Um, there may be an argument that this is the, the ultimate bad, like uh, Putin with nuclear weapons may be worse than that. Uh, but uh, even, you know, and also the consumer in the U.S., a lot of people are, are in Europe are doing very poorly. There's a lot of suffering in the real economy, but that does not mean that asset prices are falling. In, in fact, op often it's the opposite, that you have b a very, uh, very bullish risk on asset prices rising while your average person is suffering from things like recessions or or um you know job loss or in inflation so they, well they, yeah it's not necessarily i don't necessarily agree because we are yet talking about the s p 500 which is the american index and the us is heavily involved in the war uh, uh weapon wise and their war industry is now uh shut on hundred percent and but it's a money maker war is the biggest money maker in, in the world right so uh but only for those countries that just supply the weapons and yeah. don't uh are not involved so yes uh but still but still i'm studying bears right now so i'm watching all my all the bears videos and i'm looking for convincing arguments mm -hmm. and i'm i'm teasing them on twitter and trying to troll them and get them to give me solid arguments I know what they're watching for. They're watching for inflation to go higher or be persistent and the Fed to raise rates above 5%. And I agree, if that happens, we're going to have problems. Otherwise, they're wrong for another year or two and we're going to have S&P around 4,800. Again, the caveat would be a black swan event, like a, the war worsening, the, all that stuff. That's always the case that you have to look at. But uh, I'm watching for... Uh, housing prices to fall. I'm watching for a spike in unemployment. I'm watching for inflation to not keep going down. And mm -hmm. then I'll change my opinion. Until then, I think we had the bottom in S&P at, at the 3550. And I think we also had the bottom in crypto at 15.5 on Bitcoin. Um, that's where I'm standing. Is there anything else that I would like to touch? Um, maybe the Ripple case. The Ripple case okay. is um uh, the sec we will have wrapped this up uh, after this statement the s the ripple legal battle versus sec is slowly but surely coming to an end it cannot last forever it's lasts it's been on it's been going on for over two years and it has gone through various stages but i am actually shocked to see that there is no movement in a ripple price any right. direction right. so what because i know that the insiders that the people are gonna know before even before the the verdict comes out people will know and the price is likely going to react and it's likely going to only react to the positive uh verdict because even if there is an unlike this, this is unlikely that the verdict is going to be negative, that there is not at least not going to be a settlement. Uh, positive for XRP is either settlement or obviously the victory. But if it's going to be negative, even if, then I don't think the price is going to go uh, lower or that much lower than it already is simply because it never recovered after it went down in uh, 2020 when the legal battle started this is xrp on bitcoin contract and as you can see this was the drop this was the drop uh once uh, ripple got kicked from the us exchanges on the bitcoin contract the xrp went down 80 percent in a span of few weeks in one month 80 percent on bitcoin contract that is very dramatic and that was the beginning of 2020 then this whole market was growing and bitcoin was uh, making new all-time highs and the ripple has never recovered since that so it's still kind of depressed and when it's something depressed it doesn't react on the bad news dramatically yeah. wrongly however it reacts on a positive news in a dramatically positive price action right so uh that's why uh ripple could i'm thinking or i'm debating arguing that it could be a win-win scenario that um there is not that much risk and the reward might be huge yeah. however 
the price action is now like zero like ripple is one of the least uh pumping cryptocurrencies this year like ripple has gone nowhere this year like ripple right. is ripple is still lower than it was in september last year or october so i don't know like can this the battle can it last even longer i don't know like right the second half of this year are you watching some of the sec actions that have been coming out this month i i watched the uh, kraken yeah as uh, so kraken attack and i watched the debate of the of the staking ban uh i don't think it's gonna it's gonna be effective the staking ban at least right <laughs> whether they are gonna sue exchanges i'm also not sure well, but hmm? yeah. what's interesting for me is they seem to be going after exchanges and then lately they're going after stable coins right but they're not attacking individual coins with XRP as the exception, but mm -hmm. they're not going out after like a Cardano or some other thing saying it's a security. They're telling the exchanges that this, so they, they said staking is effectively a security product of some sort, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then now they're going after all of the stable coins, right? They're after going after, um, what was it, USDC, and mm -hmm. I think... Uh, obviously the binance coin they're going after right so the usd yes. um and okay. then if you're thinking you're thinking oh they're doing this to get them out of the way so they can bring in their own government coins perhaps cbdc's right? mm -hmm. yes uh but they haven't gone after individual coins they might not they might leave xrp might be the last one and they say look uh we're going to regulate at the exchange level and the exchanges are going to decide which coins are valid which is probably more bullish it could be that the coins survive or are not attacked directly. When do you think the XRP battle will conclude? I have no idea. I haven't been following it, but yeah, you'd think eventually, right? I agree that you may have a, a good asymmetrical bet here, right? In other words, the downside, there's probably not much downside. Not that much downside and, and a huge uh, upside potential. Yeah, so it might st you might have, well, at worst case, it's flat and, and, and mm -hmm. best case, it goes up a lot. Yeah. That's, um, that's the way I see it and XRP, uh, even though it's centralized as it is, it has lots of utility, and you should know because it's it's all around the Japan is, uh, yeah. is in the primary agenda seems to be for XRP. I yeah, I know the Japan connection, and then of course, uh, what else was I going to say? Um, oh, Hong Kong just uh, is get is going to be allowed to have crypto exchanges. So China is saying that Hong Kong is can be pro crypto, even though they were banning the miners. So uh, that's from June. Uh, mm -hmm. Hong Kong may be the new crypto hub in Asia, which is very bullish because China all be a big Chinese, thing. Well, Ch Hong Kong is already a major money launderer for Chinese assets, right? So there'll be a massive flood of dollars coming through Hong Kong from mainland China, uh, covertly or overtly. Uh, and uh, so that's quite bullish news. Well, um, hopefully we are going to do a podcast uh somewhere around that time or sooner of course but i don't want to give any promises because yeah. my time schedule did change a lot and curtis is traveling at the moment as well but check please check curtis's channel he's made a new channel and uh, i've seen some people coming there uh, i think that you have just two videos but you're already getting getting at least some views so i think that's definitely uh, could have uh, wider attention so it's called Check Gresham's out. Law on YouTube. Yep. If David can kindly leave a link in there. At, in of the, course. In the comment, that's I great. would have done it automatically. And yes. I'm doing, um, I'm probably going to do a crypto update and a, a macro update once every month or two. So there'll be two updates every quarter, something like that. And it'll be about an hour deep dive on uh, crypto market and then macro market um, uh, uh, every every month or two try to keep up with it so uh, tune him in and until we see one another again Curtis thank you very much for coming yeah thanks David bye